Friday campers. So July 1st. The oats are ready. I think it's a little early in the morning yet though. Uh, they're still pretty tough. I'm only going three mile an hour. So we may have to wait until this afternoon when it warms up a little bit. So yeah, it's a uh, it's slow going. Uh, we're going to make one round and, uh, around the field. And we will dump it, take it in, and get it tested for moisture content. Pretty sure it's pretty high. So, yeah. So we'll be back in a minute. As soon as, uh, as soon as we get it tested, we'll be back. I'll show you around what's uh, what's new in the last couple of weeks since I talked to you last. See you in a bit. All right. Well, we're back. It's uh, two thirty in the afternoon. We waited. Uh, we waited until it warmed up. It's eighty six degrees now. Um, we are moving right along at 8 mile an hour. Um, power consumption's in the yellow. I mean, 117, 119, not too bad. Uh, jumping up in the 120s and getting in that red. But this old Reaper can handle it. Uh, oh, yeah. We're uh, not doing too bad. We're going to sell these oats off. I couldn't remember where I sh shut the chopper off or not. I want to be able to get the straw because I need the straw for my dairy barn. So just have a little pad out here. So uh, while cutting, I'll tell you about profit we've made off of things. So, 1st of June I went and sold uh, 48,000 liters of milk. That was our first sale of milk. I got uh, $58,891 off of it. And, uh, so not too bad. Uh, and then uh, last week uh, I didn't keep track of how much I got from manure last time, but I sold uh, a tipper, which comes up to 108,000 liters of manure. I got $700, $785 off of that, plus a little $20 bonus for environmental. And uh, our slurry pit was full. And I don't know if you remember the little, uh, I had little, oh, they were 48,000 gallon tankers. They just weren't big enough, so I got rid of them, got some big uh, 48 foot, 67,000 uh, liter tankers. So uh, the first one off of, off of one of the old, the old uh, tankers. 50,000 liters and uh, I got $1,314 plus $25 of an environmental bonus for uh, slurry and uh, took another milk tanker this time it was full 50,000 liters we got $62,629 yeah, they also give us a bonus of eleven $1 hundred dollars for environmental. Look at that straw, boy! It's good because I I ran out of straw in my dairy barn. I had to go buy some. It was uh, about eight grand. I run out, so this is good. Uh, 
So then on the new tanker for 67,240 liters of slurry, I got $1,700.57 of the $33 environmental bonus. But the big one was 67,240 liters of milk. We were, we were maxed out on our milk capacity storage. Um, I added a refrigerator unit to that tanker and I plug it into the electrical at the barn but allowed me to store milk on the on the tanker as well so my internal st barn storage tanks get full I can empty into the tanker and plug the tanker in um, but for that 67 240 liters of milk we got eighty three thousand three hundred eighty seven dollars Plus a nice little $1,500, $1,594 uh, environmental bonus. So yeah, we, uh, that's a weird noise, what's that? So many arms. Alright. So yeah, we, uh, not doing too bad. Uh, we're back up over 300000 again. Um, I'm almost full, so I'll make another pass around the field here. Now, I like squaring the corners. Uh, it's just how I've always cut wheat. It's how we cut wheat on the harvest group. Um, some people like to Swing, walk, swing around in a kind of a curve and then come back and get the missed edges, but I don't know. Uh, professional harvester taught me when I was working on harvester, this is how we do it. So it's how we did it back home too when I grew up cutting wheat, so yeah. Yeah, we're not going to do that. Uh, it's tough to slow here. So this is a 45-foot uh, honeybee header. If you had not watched that episode where I talked about my headers. Um, they're made in the United States, honeybee. I think Wisconsin. I'm not sure. Wisconsin? Michigan? Somewhere in the upper Midwest. I'd have to Google it for sure. But yeah. All right, so. Checking everything we got here. We'll pipe out. Does that auger come around? Out, so I'm going to pull up a little bit here. Shut this off. Yeah, that's not bad. And we're going to go get the truck. Uh, before I take get the truck, though, we'll. Uh, actually, you know what? We we'll take the helicopter. It needs to be flowing. It hasn't been flowing over a month. This was a nice little purchase when we were in Wyoming. Used it a lot in Wyoming because uh, it was easy to get around in, in the mountains. Here I don't use it so much. So. Some additions. You can see there's a uh, little white shed straight in front of my nose with the uh, rock picker in front of it. That is a honey, little small warehouse we got for our honey. You can see we bought, we got put in three hives like we did before. So 
So I got this all planted to grass. So we got our nice big grass meadow. And I sunk 600 and some thousand. I had to borrow into the uh, ironworks. So we got the smelter. And the two, uh, we'll go ahead and land. I know they're down in the mine, but. Uh, Quite a bit of they, they've been going for about two weeks now, I think. A little bit, but uh, yeah, elevators are up. But uh, they, I don't think they've got the smelter going yet. Um, it's locked, yeah, it's locked up. So, anyway, uh We'll get the iron production going. So that and the uh, beehives, or what's new since I talked to y'all last. Uh, yeah, the last couple of weeks we've just kind of been taking care of the animals. I have been hunting for new logging ground. I was kind of looking at this property here, but it's very, very mountainy. Mountain. So I kind of thinking maybe, just maybe I might look at this property right here. A lot less hills, and I can run my trucks right down uh, down the side, or I can go right down that middle. There's a little uh, log bridge. I can cross that. So I can either go down that side of the road or across the log bridge and go down this road. So, yeah. Um, I really wanted those two fields there, but he wants 800000 for one and uh, almost five hundred, almost 600000 for the other one. Just a little too pricey for me. truck here will go empty. I think we'll probably be full. I don't know, we'll see when we get over there. High schoolers came by and
empty. Ah. All right. Well, campers, we're gonna do some more oat harvesting. We'll catch you in, uh, in, in a bit. We'll see what's going on. Thanks for watching. All righty, campers. How y'all doing? So. Uh, I'm showing you a very efficient way to pick up straw. So I have a Lizard Logistics uh, harvester. Let me finish this real quick and I'll show you exactly what I got. This is a very, very, very efficient way of picking up straw. Now, we, uh, we do all of our straw bulk. Uh, because we use it in the uh, grinder, the TMR grinder, to make total mix ration, straw, mineral feed, uh, silage, hay. Uh, but a large portion of that straw, the straw that we use, goes into the dairy barn for bedding for the cows. And so... Uh, I got just shy of two loads of straw off of this. Um, so, yeah. So, what I got, I've got this uh, lizard forage pickup attaches to the truck now. For to attach the truck, let me show you, you have to ensure, and I'm not sure how many, uh, what all trucks it works on, but I do know it works on the Lizard Roadrunner. So you have to make sure when you do, when you go through all these, um, where's it at? Attachers. Both. So what it does is it puts a three-point PTO on the front. And then the hitch on the back. So as you can see, this is no hitch on the back, but the PTO is on the front. There's none. There's the rear trailer, pin and ball. There's three point, and there's both. All right. So you got to do that. Otherwise, you cannot attach the forage pickup, which is weirdly located in belt systems and so it's just forage pickup mod here really there's no nothing can change except the, the color um, so yeah so with that and the big tipper trailer which is it's trailer right here somewhere a lot of trailers you could use it with a silage boss too now the silage boss depending on the extension depends on how how much you can put on it but I like using this uh, tipper here get 250 uh, easy on it and, it and it you can haul just about everything on it so that's this setup right here and what's great about it is you simply pipe it in. Oh, I gotta raise it up. Raise it up. And drive to your silo. So we're gonna go over here and dump this in our bulk silo. I never quite understood why the county put in a hard concrete paved road up to that point and never went anywhere else. There's nothing up here um, except the mountain area for logging. So I, I'm, not, I'm not sure what their reasoning was on that. Um, we did move the uh, manure bunker over here. Uh, 
I kind of put a flatbed, raised it up with one truck and ran a flatbed underneath it and we moved it over there. Just, it was causing commotion over there getting in and out uh, with, this, with the long trailer. So we moved it over here out of the way. Oops. So, yeah, so. Damn it. Can't fit. Too fat. So, you know, right now I've only got 170, 180,000 liters of straw. That ain't going to last me very long at all. So I'm going to get probably, oh, I got a load and a half off of that one field. I'll probably get a load and a half the other one. So I'm probably going to wind up with just shy of 400,000 liters of uh straw and that is not going to be enough those two mirror each other hey manure silage yeah these two uh, they read off of all of these together um, but I put one over there so I pull up I can see and one over here I can see so no matter where I'm at I can see how much is in storage um, But oddly enough, even though they mirror each other, what's in all three silos, um, I can't, I can only get what's in the one. So what's in the left one is what's in the left one, what's in the two smaller ones is in the two smaller ones. So, um, I am going to need a lot more straw. And clearly, it only took us a day, not even a day, so we started this morning, we were cutting these oats. And it's only gonna take me another maybe 20 minutes to load this other field up. So, I need more straw. So, what I've done is, I went to the co-op and asked around. There's a couple guys out here to the, uh, east of us I'll just show you on the map they are looking for somebody to come cut their oats and where they're at I'll show these fields it's pretty good sized fields so these three fields here actually all of these fields down here are looking for somebody to cut. So I talked to this guy down here and he's willing for me to come harvest his fields. And I can keep all the straw and I get 30% of the oats. So we're going to go do some custom cutting here after a little bit and uh, get some straw and make a little money off of the oats enough to cover my costs uh, for running the equipment and the fuel but uh, I'm not looking to make a profit but I do need that straw so that's what we're gonna do after we're done here cleaning up this field uh, so thanks for watching we'll see you in a little bit all right campers so we are on our way the second week of July we had uh, a little bit of rain so that caused some issues but uh, we struck a deal with uh, the farmer that owned those that ground over here that I, I told you about earlier um, this is one of the fields we harvested is harvested is harvested is harvested it did harvested it harvested it harvested oh my goodness harvested this and uh, so where we're at is right down here in 51 actually whoops no we're over here we're over here yeah wrong wrong spot so 
I struck a deal with a gentleman that owned this field, this field, this field, this field, and uh, and this field. Excuse me. All these fields. One, two, three. Yeah, five fields. So these five fields. So we struck a deal where I'm kind of leasing, leasing to own. And uh, so it's a 60-40 uh, 60-40 deal. So he gets 60% of the crops. I get 40%. I get to keep any straw. Um, and the 60-40 deal goes until all the fields are paid off. So, uh, yeah. So it's about, uh, well, this field alone was 700000 This one was 500 That was 100 and something. 100 something this one was about three and this one's three something so totaling all up yeah so it, it's a pretty good chunk of change but it gives me some ground some more ground that i don't have um this guy's wanting too much money for these fields it's a little ways down the road here it's it's a long pain in the butt to transport the combine and everything down here so I think I'm going to do is these fields that are cotton. Um, in this field that I own here. Um, which is uh, sugar beets. I'm going to move my cotton and sugar beet operation down here. I wanted to plant some more sugar beets. This would be a real good sugar beet field. And I think uh, probably this one. So I'll keep these sugar beets and I'll put these to cotton. But he owned, he, when he bought this property, um, he doesn't own the lake. He owns this kind of right through top of this field, back over through here, and up through here. But anyway, there was an old farmhouse here with a, with a pretty decent barn. He tore the farmhouse down, and I'll show you here when we get over there. Um... But he put like a little lake house in. And that was his little lake house. He uh, lives way up north. And so this was kind of a inherited property thing, I think, from what I understand. Some of it, and then some of it he bought. And the part that he bought, from what I understand, was where the barn and uh, old farmhouse was. But anyway, it's a tiny little lake house. He just used it to come down and do fishing. He come down on the weekends stay and fish it's like, it's like a little kitchenette and a bedroom and a bathroom uh yeah so yeah it's a pain in the butt like i said to get um even though there's a grain elevator right up the road which makes it really nice crap um that's where i've been hauling the, the oats um, it's just a long ways to haul a combine, uh, especially my big reaper. Um, so I, I think that's one of them. Marine cotton harvester and beet harvester down here. Store them. Store them in this barn down here, and then put all my cotton and beet operation down here, and put all my grains up up uh, at the main ranch so yeah you can see it's a little tiny little lake house so I got another trailer I'm leasing it right now um, just because it's such a pain to haul back and forth so I'm leasing this red one I may buy it I don't know we'll see but yeah this it's a cute little house. I mean, he's got a little dock back here. And on this lake. And a little... Like a rowboat with a trolling motor. Well, kind of little porch. But, yeah, like I said, it, it's it's tiny. Little kitchenette. Stove. Sink. Little bed. And a... Uh, little... Bathroom with a shower. So, not much here. But hey, you know, every little fishing hole. Come down here on a weekend. But yeah, it's got a barn, nice barn in here. I can put the 
bead harvester and the cotton harvester in here and uh, it's got a hayloft so yeah I can uh, I can store hay up here if I ever get the need maybe cotton bales if I don't want to sell them right away so this comes with it so I'm leasing to own this but uh, yeah we uh, I had to run home and uh, take the wife to town. Her car was getting fixed, and so I had to take her. Uh, I was up here early this morning, greasing everything. Um, yeah, I don't. 72 degrees. I don't know if this is going to be too wet to cut yet. I don't know. We're going to give it a try. Let's see just how tough this is. Oh, it's tough. Look at that. It's tough. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to have to wait. It's tough. I can hardly cut it. So, we'll probably wait till this afternoon. So I'm gonna head back to the house and got the uh, need to finish finish up that logger. Uh, with this place he said I can do the logging. So I got a little more space to log, but he wants twenty percent of any logging I do, so you know, hey that's fair. Um, so yeah, so that that's our update. That's what we got going on. So thanks for watching. And we'll see you in the next episode.